Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John's. This is the place where? Grace the balance. Amen. Grace the balance for us on this uh, wonderful day. Baptism of our Lord is what we're celebrating. Uh, first big thing today, you notice Yuri is not here. Yuri is uh, homesick and quarantined, and so please remember to keep him in your prayers. However, we will not be without music today. Uh, all of our Guest organists are either busy or just not comfortable coming inside of the building at the moment. So uh, we could not get a replacement organist, but you got me. And so we're going to play guitar. Um, whether, you, yeah, whether you like it or not, <laughs> we're going to be singing to, um, with the guitar today. And so I tweaked the service a little bit to be a little bit more guitar friendly. Um, <laughs> Uh, threw in a few canticles that are more guitar friendly uh, for the Kyrie and for the hymn of praise. Um, we're going to do an antiphonal psalm today for the psalm, Psalm 29. And we've got a special Alleluia verse before the gospel. All of our hymns will be guitar. Uh, but of course, when we get down to the sacrament, the service of the sacrament, uh, we're going to forego the offering today. There's no offering music. Um, so, if you'd be so kind to leave your offerings on the offering plate in the narthex today, we'll do it that way. When we get to the sacrament, our canticles that we would normally sing, such as the Sanctus and the Agnus Dei, we're just going to speak those out loud today. We'll speak those in unison. And for the distribution of communion, we'll do it the same way we have been doing. Um, myself and Barbara will communion first, and then I'll, well, I'll accept communion those who took the individual cups, and then we'll come down. And uh, we'll, we'll just do that in silence today. There'll be no distribution hymns. I think that'll be okay. A little silent meditation never hurt anyone. Uh, to slow down from the week and not have our senses overloaded, but to just sit and uh, reflect on what Christ has done for us and sit in thankfulness. Uh, a couple announcements outside of that. Uh, first, if you have any empty flower bins, like the empty bucket bins, you know what I'm talking about when you get flowers for the altar. Do you have any of those? Oh yeah, uh, Debbie's holding one up in the back. If you've got any of those at home, uh, if you would be so kind to bring those back, we need some, uh, we're running out. Uh, so if you have any of those. Uh, reflecting his life, Ladies Aid meeting this coming Saturday, January 15th. We have Ladies Aid soup fundraiser sheets. Out on the back in the narthex, there's a little basket for the reception of those. Please fill out that half sheet. Um, have a, a check earmarked soup with those. We have some delicious offerings this month for those. Uh, food collection this Wednesday. Barbara Rand will be collecting food in the parking lot on Wednesday, January 12th from 12 to 1. And I'll have you pay attention to what they are asking for, the items that they're being requested. Uh, they have an overabundance of like the vegetables, the beans, the pasta, the sauce, and they need uh, the things that are listed in there. So take a look at that. Bible study this week, we're continuing on in the book of Judges. What does Gideon's battle in Judges 7 have to do with Christmas? Mm, find out this week. See, now I got your, your attention. I'm going to figure out what that's all about. I'm going to join Pastor Jake and the crew. And look at Judges 7 this week. So join us. The information there is under spiritual growth opportunities. 2000, almost done. 2022 calendars are in the back by, uh, by the mailboxes. We finally found them. We had them all along. Sorry that they weren't there last week. But we have them. Uh, the Wiegand's calendars, the infamous Wiegand's calendars. Pick one of those up along with an F, uh, the latest issue of Let It Shine. Um, and I think that's it. May God bless our time together as we remember that Jesus came to stand in the place of sinners, you and I. Let us pray. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here into this place this morning to receive your good gifts. We ask that you bless us and send your spirit to us and guide us in all truth. Focus our eyes on Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. Please stand as we sing our opening. And I'm thinking, even though it's not going to be written this way, 
way. Uh, um, stanza four, we'll repeat the last line. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Strengthen you with his grace 
to life everlasting. singing the cancer bill in your heart, oh God, is grieved. So when it begins with the cancer part, and I'll sing the cancer part, and have you join in with this congregation. Oh God, Father in heaven,
Because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you, I give men in return for you, equals in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 29. I'm going to be singing an antiphonal psalm today. I'll run through the antiphon once, and then I'll have you join me two more times, and every time we sing it, we'll sing it twice after that. The antiphon goes like this. May God give strength to the
Stand. I don't believe we've sung this Alleluia before, so I'll sing it through once, so you get a taste for it, and then we'll, we'll sing it together. It goes.
My dear friends in Christ, our gospel reading this morning uh, begins with people wondering if John the baptizer was indeed the Christ. But he answered them, nope, you've got the wrong guy. He's coming after me. And I'm not even worthy to do the most lowly of services for him. He says, I baptize you with water. Here we go. But he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hands to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And the next words from Luke are surprising, unexpected. It says, so with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. He preached good news to the people. I would expect that to say, so with many other exhortations, he scared the people half to death. Or with many other exhortations, he shook them up so that they'd get their act together. But no, with words like these, he preached what? Good news to the people. This whole uh, the Christ having a winnowing fork and separating grain from the wheat, uh, excuse me, grain from the chaff and, and burning the chaff with a quenchable fire bit, that's all good news. Did anyone else hear it that way? I'm guessing not. <laughs> or did your mind, did your mind go into like reassurance mode? Right? You had to reassure yourself immediately that, wait, I'm, I'm not chaff. I'm not chaff. Okay, I gotta remember that. I'm not chaff. I'm, I'm wheat. Right? I'm wheat, right? Is that what John is getting at? Should you have to go into reassurance mode wondering if you are wheat, grain, or chaff? Well, remember that all of this is being said in the context of baptism. All, right, all of our readings are about baptism today. It's the baptism of our Lord. Um, and this is specifically in the context of John's baptism, which was a baptism of repentance, of preparation for uh, the Messiah. And Jesus came to the Jordan that day to be baptized by John. And of course, we always have to ask the question, what's Jesus doing in the water that day? Why is he going down to the Jordan? He's God in human flesh and blood, our human brother in every way, except that he was without sin. So he had nothing to repent of, right? So why is he going into the water to be baptized by John? Well, think of it this way. His baptism is a, is a picture of the whole reason for him being born into his creation. He came to stand in the place of sinners. He came to stand in the place of sinners in our life, in our death, and in our punishment, and even in our repentance. There in the Jordan River, Jesus is standing in the place of sinners, the only one who could actually repent perfectly, even though he had no sin of his own. So he's baptized there in the, in the Jordan River, and years later, he's fully baptized into our sin at the cross, fully and completely drowned in the sins of the world. He actually becomes our sin and, and puts them to death in his body. On Good Friday, he's crucified in the place of every sinner. You and me, every human being, all of us reduced down to one person. He's our substitute. His death, his sacrifice, it was for all people, for all sin. This is what he came to do. And three days later, of course, did Jesus stay dead? Oh, my dear friends, did Jesus stay dead? We're not awake yet. My dear friends, did Jesus stay dead? No, no. no. He rose from the dead, the proof, the, the vindication that your sin and mine has been put away. As Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, if Jesus had not been raised, our faith is futile, and we are still in our sins. There would still be punishment for it. 
But since the sacrifice has been made and peace has been made with God fully and completely, because sin has been atoned for, so has its wages. Death has been conquered in Jesus. His death for us defeats our death. His resurrection promises us resurrection one day. So our crucified and risen Lord, this Jesus, is the one that John is talking about. We know that. John is talking about the one who would come after. This is Jesus, who came to stand in the place of sinners. And he says he will come and baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That sounds like two separate things. Maybe two separate baptisms, right? The Holy Spirit and, and fire. But the Greek doesn't allow you to do that. This is just one event. One thing, one action. Think of it like this, the the spirit who brings fire might be a better way to translate it. The, the fiery spirit. The spirit who brings fire. See, now the wheels are turning. Where do we have an event in the church's history where the spirit is very much active and there's fire involved? Pentecost. Pentecost, right? The day of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit descends on the disciples and he comes to them like tongues of fire. And he gives them the ability to speak in other languages, because there's a whole bunch of people in Jerusalem at the time, and they all speak different languages. The Holy Spirit breaks down the language barrier to preach the good news. The good news of Christ crucified and risen for them, first cutting them to the heart with their sin and then bringing the good news. And so the result of that day the result of the, the preaching of the good news by the power of the Holy Spirit who brought fire was what? Well, it was a whole bunch of people getting baptized. Remember that? A whole bunch of people were then baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This baptism, this baptism, Christian baptism that is given to the church is the baptism that came after John's. This is the lavish washing of water and the Spirit where God's Word promises and gives good gifts. Gives the Holy Spirit to us, as promised in Acts 2. The forgiveness of sins we get. Adoption into God's family. I mean, the, the papers are signed. We belong to Him now. We have an, a brand new life in Him. We have the intimate connection, as we read in Romans 6, this intimate connection to Christ's death and resurrection. And therefore, we have eternal life. If you're connected to Christ's death and resurrection, you're saved. This is the same baptism that you and I received by the grace and mercy of God. I have to tell you, uh, I love it when a kid gets fussy at a baptism and crying. Uh, I know parents probably don't appreciate that as much, but I do. I like it when the kid gets all fussy. Uh, it's a reminder of the violent nature of baptism. Pastor, the violent nature of baptism, that's more chill than a bath at home. What are, you, what are you talking about? The violent nature of baptism. In 1 Peter chapter 3, Peter makes this awesome connection. He connects baptism, Christian baptism, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, to Noah's Ark. Okay, bring your minds back to Noah's Ark, everything that happened in that time. What's going on in Noah's Ark, the, the days of Noah? Well, God provided an ark, remember, that Noah, Noah built. God gave him the, the specs for that, the blueprints. Uh, God provided this ark for Noah and his family, eight people, and that saved them from the flood, right? So the water in that case, think of the water in and the flood. Is that a good thing? Not exactly, because everything else was wiped out. You know, all, all these people were drowned in it. Everything and er anything and everything else other than Noah and his family were destroyed. The scriptures even say uh, that God had regretted making man, and it grieved him to his heart. The world had become so evil and hardened to God's love and his promises and his provision uh, that he kind of hit like a little bit of a reset button. 
Everything else was flooded out. Noah, though, was saved and preserved. Noah and his family through the ark. Everything else that was not righteous, righteous by faith, nothing that was uh, evil or opposed to God survived. Jesus is our ark. And that's what Peter's getting at. The water in baptism is like that raging flood. What's it doing? It's, it's got a very violent job, a very violent purpose. It's ripping you away from the clutches of the devil. It's drowning your sin, your old sinful self, your old Adam, that which is sinful in you, your old nature. And that's why I like the kids when they cry. This is a violent nature, what's going on? But despite all that, you are preserved, aren't you? You come through unharmed, unscathed through baptism because you are being put into Jesus, your ark, and you're preserved through that water, safe in him, and given a new life. So now that I've gone down all these tangents of what does this all have to do with our text this morning? Well, let me connect the dots for you and give you some more good news. Jesus is going to separate the wheat from the chaff. But remember, those words are spoken in the context of baptism. This is not a judgment regarding the separation of persons. You're not left wondering or worrying if you're wheat or chaff or having to do this, this inner checklist or even given the permission to make a judgment call about other people. John is describing what Jesus is doing and specifically what he's doing in your baptism. What's he separating? He's separating the you, the, the grain of wheat from the chaff of your sin. He's burning away your old sinful self. Or to use baptismal language, he's drowning it. Like the people in Noah's day or Pharaoh's army. Jesus is taking care of that which needs to be cut off, forgiven, repented of, and made new. He's taking care of your sin and your death. He is taking care of your sin and your death. Who's got the winnowing fork? Not you. <laughs> God's got the winnowing fork in his hand. Not you. You see, to use the imagery, uh, we've covered this a little bit in Judges uh, with, with Gideon and how you know, wheat, wheat grows up with both the grain and the chaff together, right? And it's not until the very end that you cut it down and that you have to do the separating and uh, then you toss it all up in the air and the wind blows the chaff away and the grain falls to the threshing floor. Until that time, the wheat is both the chaff and the grain. And so it is with us. We have a phrase that we like to use, a fancy Latin phrase, simul justus et peccator, which means simultaneously, at the same time, saint and sinner. And this is a very important thing to remember, that we are both, at the same time, fully and completely corrupt in our sin, broken, and at the same time, fully and completely righteous in Christ. You are fully, 100% completely righteous in Christ right now. And you still have this old sinful nature that is going to grow up with you until the time where Jesus does the separating. This is you, and you're not going to be getting rid of the sinner part. The winnowing fork is not in your hands. It's in Jesus' hands. And through your baptism, into his death and resurrection, through Jesus, he has promised that you won't stay that way. One day, the chaff will be cleared away permanently. Just as it has already been, uh, been put to death in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Your sin, your guilt, your shame, your brokenness, your sickness, your death, all the chaff will be blown away with the wind on the last day as you're raised up to meet the Lord in the air. This is the great gift that's given to you and promised in your baptism. And it's, it's all because you're baptized into Christ. 
At the very end of our reading today, Jesus is baptized and the Father speaks from heaven. You know, with the dove, uh, the Holy Spirit makes himself visible. And the Father speaks from heaven. He says, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well I said, with you I am well pleased. I don't know how many of you thought of this, but we heard that exact word not too long ago now. Although it feels like, wow, Christmas was not that long ago. Do you remember the angel's message to the shepherds on Christmas? Glory to God in the highest. This is from Luke 2, by the way. Um, and this, our text, gospel text today is from Luke as well, so I think this connection is valid. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. Who's God pleased with? His son. Who's God pleased with? His son. You see, you don't have to worry if you are in or out or weed or chaff or do this, uh, this checklist, this inner checklist to see if I, I meet all the criteria You've been baptized into Jesus. He's taken your place in life, in death, and in the resurrection. They're all yours. You've been intimately connected to him through your baptism. His righteousness is yours. So since God is pleased with his son, and you are in his son, guess what? You're going to get to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Pastor Jake, I'm afraid I haven't done enough good things. No, <laughs> but Jesus has. But I haven't been faithful enough. No, but Jesus has. And I haven't repented enough. Yes, and Jesus stood in your place. He stood in the place of sinners, even at the Jordan River, doing everything on your behalf. Everything that he knew that you couldn't do for yourself. He is your savior, after all. You are not your savior. He is your savior. And the winnowing fork is in his hands. And for us who are sinners, that's really good news. He takes away all that is broken and sinful in you. One day he'll take it all away permanently. Wipe every tear from your eyes and make you new. And you and I, and all those who are in Christ, baptized into Christ, will be gathered into the barn of his presence for all eternity. Thanks be to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, and I know his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God. Begotten of not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us in the conscious pilot. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead. The life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious and merciful God, as the heavens were opened at the baptism of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
So you have opened the very heavens to us as your baptized people. Give to us the confidence of faith and the power of your love that we may live as your children, even now, amid the changes of this fallen world, ever rejoicing in your constant mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. grant your constant blessing upon your whole church. Give wisdom and confidence to all pastors and servants of your word, and faithfulness and love to all your people, that your truth may sound forth and prevail in our lives and through our service in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. preserve our nation in the ways of righteousness and peace. Guide the leaders of all nations to pursue justice and peace. Guard and protect all who serve in the armed forces of our country, and all, and all who protect us in our land. Grant to all faithfulness in their service. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Comfort and help all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or adversity. We especially lift up to you today Jane Wicks, Allison, Nancy Gaines, Chris Turner, Barbara Stanson, Donald Wicks Jr., Greg Lucas, Karen Lucas, Anita Keaton, Yuri Yabay, Johnny Wilson, Helen Tom, Kathy Bruno, Erica Brody, David Anton, Mara Howard, Monica Peschel, Paul and Stuart Hilton, Carol Roach, Marilyn Stone, Charlie Stone, Jennifer Mitchell, Gail, Jerry Radson, Paul Albertson, Rocco Campanelli, Kevin and Leah Franciani, Al Furwater, Meryl Rock, Pastor Vic Brad, and those we name in our hearts. Have mercy on all to whom death draws near. Sustain and bless all who care for those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints, and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord. Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him, being found the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of Sabbath, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those who you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and His kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Helped by our Lord and trusting His promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our
forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take me. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it in all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you who took the individual chalices, I will commune you now. We open the bread. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. We open the cup. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen.
Lord is true God and is true love. Strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith, now and to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. As we receive the blessing of our Lord, we place our hands out in front of us like a cup to remind us that everything we have is a gift from God. We come with nothing to give, nothing to offer, and everything to receive. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Continue with our closing hand.
the bounding grace of our Lord, one that Jesus has stood in your place and done it all for you, and one day will wipe away all that you have. God's blessings on your week. Amen.